So in this video, we're going to look at two new terms, the first of which is something called the isoelectric point, and the second term is Zwitter iron. So what is an isoelectric point? An isoelectric point, let me just write that in, isoelectric point, is the pH at which a molecule has no net electrical charge. So if it's got a positive ion, it'll also have a negative ion to cancel that out. So overall, it's not positively charged, it's not negatively charged, it's got no net electrical charge. Which means if you were to put it in an electric field, it wouldn't move. No net electrical charge. Now the thing that we have to understand about our um, amino acids, that is at this point, this isoelectric point, our amino acid is going to exist as a dipolar ion. Let's see what we mean by that. We know that an amino acid has a variable R group and a hydrogen, and then it has a Ku group, a carboxylic acid group, and it, it's going to exist as an iron, and an amine group that's also going to exist as an iron. And so we are a dipolar iron. Now the name for a dipolar iron is a Zwitter iron. Zwitter iron. Okay, so we have a dipolar iron, two poles. Now Zwitter ions um, form when that carboxylic acid group, that's our um, Ku group, of one amino acid donates its proton, its H+, plus, to the amine group, the NH2 of another amino acid molecule in our beaker. So let's have a think about our different R groups and their different pHs at which they are um, electrically neutral, their isoelectric points. Now when glycine, um, when we look at glycine we've got the R group being a hydrogen, so we're thinking about this. So this particular ion exists in solution at pH 5.97. And sometimes people will say, well, if it's neutral and if it's got one positive and one negative um, and there's one acid group and one base group, why doesn't it not have a pH of 7? What you've got to remember is that this is a balance between the acidity of the carboxylic acid and the basicity of the amine and nobody said that the carboxylic acid group was as strong an acid as the amine was a base. So in this case, because the pH is less than 7, who do you think is stronger? Is a Ku group a better acid or an NH2 group a better base? So I'm going to think about those numbers. Since 5.97 is slightly acidic, we could say that the Ku group is more able to donate its protons than the amine group is able to accept them. And then we can have a think about why, when we change that R group to alanine, might that increase the pH a bit? And maybe we could start to think about the positive inductive effect. So these are all thoughts that we could be having about why these pH values are changing. Now you will not be expected to explain those, but it's good chemistry to think about why they might be changing. Glutamic acid has got a much lower isoelectric point, and that's because the R group here has got a Ku in it, another acidic group, so our pH is much more acidic, so there's much more ability to donate protons, and our um, Lysine has got a base group in, so this is much more um, basic pH value, a much higher pH value, because we've got more ability to accept protons. So this alanine with the CH3 was slightly less acidic than glycine, um, so slightly less able to donate and slightly more able to accept than glycine. So the pH of a Zwitter ion is the same as its isoelectric point, Glutamic acid has an isoelectric point of 3.22, as the R group is acidic, so our R group was what? Have a think about our R group. It had that Ku in it, it was acidic. 
And the isoelectric point of lysine is higher than 7 because the R group is basic. And remember, by basic we mean not an acid, it's a base. Not that it's suddenly easy, but that it's basic. So what is the effect of pH then? If we were to start varying the pH, what would happen to the stru our structure of our amino acid? On the next page we're going to be doing some drawing, but at a pH that is lower than the isoelectric point, then the amino acid is going to accept protons. So it's going to behave as a base because we're at a pH lower. To get a pH that's lower, we need to, to put some acid into our beaker, in acid. Then we're, we're going to end up accepting protons wherever we can. And at a pH that is higher than the isoelectric point, we're going to donate. Now, how would we get a pH that's higher? Well, then we'd be in base. So we'd be in a beaker of sodium hydroxide, perhaps. And we're going to start to donate protons. So the sort of question you might get. You might get told that glycine has an isoelectric point and you might be asked to draw the structure of glycine at 5.97, its isoelectric point. And so trick number one is that at the isoelectric point, 5.97, the Zwitter ion exists. So we have to draw our Zwitter ion at the isoelectric point. Remember our Zwitter ion is where we've got our R group, which in the case of glycine is a H. We've got a H. And we've got the Ku group donating and the amine group accepting the proton. So at the isoelectric point, we've got the Zwitter ion. Now, if you remember from the previous page, at a pH lower than the isoelectric point, the amino acid is going to behave as a base and accept protons. So remembering that the amino acid, glycine, actually looked like this. So it's going to behave as a base at pH 2 and accept protons. We put it into a beaker of acid, it's going to accept protons. So we could draw out our amino acid to start off with in H2. C, H, H, because it's glycine, C double bond O, OH. And at the isoelectric, uh, pH below the isoelectric point, it's going to accept a proton, so it's going to get an extra one here because we're at pH 2. Okay. And at pH is above the isoelectric point, we're going to donate a proton from our structure. So we're going to lose the proton from this group here. So I want you to pause the video now and see if you can apply that to the next example. Follow the same pattern. Can you draw serine at the isoelectric point and at a low pH and a high pH? So at the isoelectric point, we've got the dipolar ion, the Zwitter ion. So the Ku group has lost the proton. The amine group has accepted it. At low pH, our amine group has accepted a proton because we're in acid to get to a low pH, but our Ku group is still sitting there as a full carboxylic acid group. And at high pH, the carboxylic acid group has donated a proton, and we have got COO minus. So why don't you have another go with another example, lysine? How would you expect that to look? We've got our Zwitter ion at pH 9.59 at the isoelectric point. A dipolar ion, two poles, a plus and a minus. And then just watch out. Notice now, at low pH, it is going to accept protons, going to act as a base, 
and it could accept a proton here because the nitrogen had a lone pair which could accept a proton and act as a base, but it's also accepting a proton here because there's another nitrogen with a lone pair. So at that low pH, every nitrogen that can will accept um, a proton. And at high pH, the carboxylic acid group is going to donate. Okay, let's have a look at our last example, aspartic acid, where we've got the R group with a carboxylic acid group in it. So in our final example there, aspartic acid, you just have to watch out this time because at high pH, we've got two acidic groups that can donate protons to the um, sodium hydroxide that might be causing that high pH. Right, so you do need to remember that low pH is caused by adding acid, high pH would be caused by adding alkali, the zwitterion is what exists at the isoelectric point. Go through this and maybe have a go at some of the questions in, in your packs because there's plenty more examples of dealing with amino acids at different pHs that you could have a go at.